Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be looking at is Entity Theft, which is basically an entity is going to take a random item from my inventory and run off with it. So there's an entity down there that I spawned in. I think they actually spawn naturally, but it was a little hard to find them. So I'm just going to get close and then he's going to automatically target me and then he's going to take an item and then his entity state will update. So it basically changes and then he'll... Um, basically run off with the item and if I open up his inventory and then take out the item then his entity state changes again and then he will uh, go ahead and um, try to get the item again after a certain amount of time. It takes a little time for him to clue in that that I'm nearby that's just down to the Minecraft mechanics so as you can kind of see the items are basically changed uh, randomly uh, based on the slot so I've set it up that way all right so let's go into M Creator, and then we'll go ahead and basically um, check out how that's all set up okay in M Creator, what we have is we have a couple entities and then two procedures for them as well as one inventory so that's all that there is for this particular me mechanics uh, we need to make sure that the empty entity has the um, a name and a few other uh, texture and a few other things and then after we need to make sure that this is on mob so when you have the system on mob then what you'll be able to do is set the uh, the uh, the follow range and tracking range to a higher number and then you will also want to set up a inventory you want it to have one just as a back uh, a backup system just in case something happens and then for the empty entity you want it so when the player collides with this entity you'll have a trigger for that your AI task uh, and goals will look very similar to this. Uh, basically what is happening is it's going to set up the wandering, looking, floating, and fighting mechanics and then attack the player, but it's not actually going to attack the player, it's going to target the player. So once it's done that, what it's going to do is go towards the player. Uh, after, uh, you want to make sure that the spawning is enabled. You might want to uh, disable the um, despawn when idle, uh, or you can enable it. It shouldn't make a huge difference on this particular state, but the other state you don't want it to despawn because it will have the items in it. Um, other than that, uh, the procedure itself uh, basically looks like this. We're running it on server side. We're testing for both the server or regular player. We're also having a repeater uh, that runs 250 times in this one tick. This allows us to basically get a guaranteed uh, slot that has an item. If there isn't one, then it's not going to go ahead and basically find the item. It's just going to run until it finds anything and then start the cycle over again uh, when the entity is colliding. So basically we're setting a slot number between zero and 35. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that that slot is basically tested and passed over to a local variable for an item. And then we're testing the count of the item stack that we just did. And then we're finally testing the count uh, of that item. And then all this is basically happening. So if that doesn't happen, uh, then this part won't actually execute. So uh, it'll just basically try again from a different slot. So it'll just keep repeating that process. Um, once it does find something, it's going to spawn the full entity. And it's going to basically replace all the other variables so health oxygen those are being passed over to um, local variables though I think I'd remove that in the an actual version just directly put it on the thing we're then testing for the nearest entity and then we're testing for the nearest entity for the full applying that to a local variable and then we're going to apply the health oxygen rotation and then the finally uh, set up the slot and then if it's burning for the empty version then we're going to basically go ahead and uh, put the remaining ticks on to the seconds now you have to basically divide that by um, 20 so it's seconds not ticks 
So 20 ticks per second, and then you want to make sure that it's in ticks, right, or seconds. So you would need to divide that by 20. And then after, what we're doing is we're just applying the movement vector uh, to try to keep the same velocity. It doesn't really do anything, but just in case the game changes, I guess, and makes more sense on how it's set up. And then finally, what we're doing is we're basically going to remove that slot from the source entity, which is the player. And then we're despawning the empty version and breaking out of the loop. So basically, after it does that, it's just going to cancel out any remaining uh, numbers for the repeater. All right, so that's that particular one. Let's take a look at the full, uh, well, look at the inventory first. So this is just basically the inventory as one slot. We have it so it's going to drop items when it's not bound. We have a slot zero, and that's correlating to the other things. We don't have any triggers or anything like that in this particular inventory. It's just one slot. All right, so the full entity. So the full entity, again, you'll need the name, the texture, and any other properties you want to set up on this particular page for the entity. Uh, sound, you can configure how you like. Behavior, again, it should be under mob, and it should have the follow range and the tracking range at 16 and 64. Then we want to make sure we select our inventory and select that one slot that we have in our inventory for this uh, full entity. Then we have an update tick. We'll cover that in a little bit. And basically that controls the mechanics for all the other stuff. So then we're going to basically avoid the player and server player uh, with a speed factor of 1.2 and a four factor of 1 and a radius of 32. So this will make the entity wander if there isn't anything around and then we're looking and floating in water. Uh, you don't want this particular entity to spawn, so you want to disable spawning and dis disable uh, despawn when idle. So those are two important things that you want to do. Now going back to the procedure, uh, what we need to do is we need to open that up and then you can see that it's running on server side. We're testing if the slot for the entity is empty. So if it's zero, the slot zero is empty. And then what we're going to do is we're going to spawn the empty version of the entity. And then we're applying all those variables again. And then again, I moved all the uh, those local variables to the, directly onto the thing. So we're then spawning, testing for the nearest entity, applying the nearest entity to a local variable. And then we're going to set up the oxygen health uh, rotation if it's burning or um, basically the ticks thing that we'll need to divide that by 20 again and then we're attempting to move the movement vector so basically if the movement vector is um, helps with the well should help with the movement for the entity but it doesn't seem to do that and then basically what we're doing is we're just despawning the full entity once this part has run. So that's basically it. That's the entire script to make a entity steal the inventory. I'll make sure to provide all the components as well as the AI tasks and goals in the workspace. So outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.